Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Diablo 3 PTR for patch 210, the seasonal patch. Alright, so very quickly I'm just going to clear things up here. This video is intended for greater rifts, so I'm going to show off what the greater rifts are, how to get them, and all that wonderful stuff. So first things first, you need some of these rift keystone fragments, of which I have too many. You only need one nowadays in order to create a rift, but you can't just click on the obelisk and have it open up. Because you get these greater rift keystones now, you have to be able to put the keystone fragment in here and hit accept. So you'll need to have these in your inventory to start off. So the whole process starts off here in creating a single rift. Your goal is to get one of these, a greater rift keystone level one fragment or keystone. Grab one of these and you can create one of these at the obelisk. In order to do so, you need to fight the boss inside the rift. So the only way that, I, that I've been able to find so far of getting these keystones is to beat the boss. They don't appear anywhere else, and as far as I can tell, they don't actually drop on the ground. But you will get an announcement when you've gotten one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, try and clear this up, and I'm going to show off a few of the undocumented changes in the game that I failed to mention in the last video. By the way, I apologize for how quick that last video was. Um, it was meant to be kind of a, here's how to get in, and here's some of the quick overviews of what's going on with the game. Just because it's kind of hard to really go over a lot of the changes, because there's a, there's a pretty massive list of changes, and those changes are going to get updated over time. And it just didn't seem right to just do this huge, massive patch note video at the time. And I'll probably do one when the actual patch comes out. So one do undocumented change here that I'll let you off, of course, is the fact that you can see that icons drop for gold now. If you are using the text instead of the icons like I am, then you will actually see the gold amount. I can mouse over to see the gold amount now. This is something I know a lot of people, including myself, have wanted to see because when there's small packs of gold, you kind of want to know if it's worth picking up or not. Also, I'd like you to keep an eye out right here in the lower right-hand corner, right by my resources. As there is a gold counter now that will tell you how much gold you've picked up in a certain amount of time. So if you see a bunch of packs of gold, like right now, and you want to know how much you actually picked up, or say maybe you killed a treasure goblin or something, you can actually find out how much gold you got. You can see down there, there's the whole total. I got 9,387 gold. This can be especially useful if you're using items that do anything with your gold, such as, uh, I believe what it, I can't remember the name of it now, but there's an item that increases your defense based on how much gold you pick up. There's an item that gives you experience based on how much gold you picked up. And now you can easily see at a glance how much gold you actually did pick up in a short period of time. So that's quite nice to see. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish off this rift. And I will hopefully show you what it's like to get a greater rift keystone. Well, no luck so far regarding uh, getting a shard fragment to show it off but it did allow me to remember one thing I wanted to show off that was in the patch notes I do believe and that is the ability to compare items without sockets so I found this bow and I'm looking at it and it would be nice to know is it better if that gem weren't in the socket I mean we look at it and it says I'm gonna lose 53 percent damage well they've added functionality where if I hold down shift you'll notice that the gem grays out and you'll notice that the damage number changes. So looking at this, I can see that with the stats that this bow has, it's actually going to be 29% less damage than the item I have. Now whether or not it turns off the gem for the offhand, that I couldn't say. I mean, I could go down here and I could take a look at this and say, okay, just looking at the two, it's still less damage, like so. So you have the functionality of being able to hold shift to compare an item without a socket, so you can know if it's any good or not. Oh, 
All right, there we go. We've completed this rift, and as you can see, a pop-up appeared that says you've earned a greater rift token. And you can see here that my keystone level one has increased by one. So you don't actually see an item drop on the ground. You actually see the pop-up instead. So you don't have to worry about picking it up or missing it. It's going to be given to you one way or the other. So once you're done, you can go back to town. I'm not even going to worry about picking up these items or anything like that. It's PTR. Nothing I do here is going to be saved. So we're just going to go ahead and close this rift. All right, before you move on to one of these greater rifts, what you're probably going to want to do is make sure that you repair yourself. Because once you go into one of these greater rifts, you cannot... When you die, you cannot respawn at your corpse. And you cannot respawn back at town. Now... It seems like you can leave the rift with your town portal. But of course you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the rift because you have to walk through the, be the beginning of this obelisk here in order to get back in because you can't open a portal. So that means that if you have to leave to repair, you're going to have to go through the whole thing again. And this is a timed rift, so you want to make sure you go in ready, prepared. You don't have to really worry about clearing out your inventory because one of the good things about this is that items really won't drop until the end. So first thing and foremost I like to show off I am showing as being on Torment 3 right now but that's not going to matter. So I'm going to go ahead and put this Greater Riftstone level 1 and I'm going to go ahead and accept. Now in a multiplayer game a pop-up would appear for the other person to let them know that hey when you go in here you can't leave right away uh, are you sure you want to do this and also every party member that you're with has to have the same Keystone Fragment as you when you're going in. So it does, much like doing a regular rift, everyone has to pay one. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what it takes in order to get these to drop. And unfortunately, also, <laughs> I'm in a rift that appears to be underpopulated, which is kind of um, keeping me from filling up my bar. I'm not sure how the difficulty affects drops of keystone fragments. There are, there is no real documentation on how it works. So the unfortunate thing is, uh, you might have an equal chance of getting into one of these rifts on normal than you would on a torment level. But I don't think that's true. I imagine that the rift fragments have follow the same drop rates as the old legendary crafting materials. So you'll probably get a bigger chance as you go up in your torment levels. Uh, and unfortunately, what I have noticed, it took me about four or five runs, even at Torment 3 or 4, more to mostly Torment 3, um, a lot of Torment 2 runs as well. So, if you can do higher Torment levels, you'll want to try and more than likely do those if you're going for these fragments. Now, what you may notice is, of course, the bar is a little bit different. You'll notice that there is, there's two sliders on the bar as well. Up here is the this is the progress bar, so you can see I'm at 19% progress for this area. Unfortunately, the map of the area I'm in is not very huge, so not a lot of enemies here. The idea is to get this progress bar to the end before this timer goes. So you see I have 13 minutes to complete this rift. If I complete it fast enough, I will get another fragment. Now if I, if I complete the rift before the timer expires. I will get a fragment. That's the truth of the matter. That's, it doesn't really matter. But the higher, the lower this timer is when I complete it, the more levels I'll skip. I believe you skip a maximum of 10 because when I first did this I got through it pretty quick because I had some populated areas. Unfortunately you can see that having a rift with low population can really hurt your chances of getting this completed. You want to move quickly. Now, one of the things I like about this and that I found interesting that kind of made me interested to do more of these is that you'll notice because no items are dropping and because this is kind of a race, it gives me a reason for wanting to kind of move quickly to just kind of move as fast as I can. I may not want to sit here and enter in a fight with a lot of creatures right away. I probably want to just move fast, do this, kind of fire every now and then and just run through, let my pets do a lot of the work for me. No items drop, so you can't be distracted. Since it is a timed race, they wanted to make sure that you focused on the time rather than focus on loot. Now, you'll notice these little orbs here, these red, weird floating orbs. Whenever I pick those up, you'll notice that they increase the kill count. 
So what happens is each monster counts pretty much as a single entity, a single kill for moving the rift along. So in order to balance that out, when you're fighting elite monsters and they're in tougher monsters, they're going to drop those red orbs, which is going to improve the rate at which you are clearing the clearing the rift bar. So they give you something to make it worth your time. Like if these guys didn't give additional these orbs in order to help clear the the rift, I would probably want to skip them and just try to find normal enemies to kill because it just wouldn't be worth the time. Because in this rift, even elites don't drop items. I mean, there's no point in fighting elites if they're not going to give you an item. So the the point now is to kill them to get those little orbs, and you can get a huge amount of kill credit for picking up those orbs. So it is usually worth it to pick up one of these orbs, or to, to kill the elites to get these orbs, because they will usually be worth far more, like you see just how much that kill bar just went up when I picked those up. It's usually a worth it for the time spent. But if it's taking you a long time, you know, that's going to be a decision you have to make. Do you skip a pack? Do you move past because it's taking you too long to kill it? In this instance, I've got... This is not a very good rift for me. It's not giving me a lot of kills quickly. Not, although the last one and now this one are a little bit better about that. But the first two areas certainly were not good. So the good news is, even if the timer counts down, what will happen is... If you get the... You have to get the kill timer to the end to complete the rift. So it's like a normal rift in that regard. Even if the timer expires, you will have a chance to fill up the bar. In that case, it's just going to be like a normal rift. What will happen is, after the timer counts down, it will give you a conclusion saying, okay, this is as high as you got, and it will give you experience and gold based on how far you got. And then just like a normal rift, when you go out and talk to Auric, you close the rift and you get golden experience again. So you actually double up the golden experience not really double. You'll see the amounts are a little bit different. You get a bit more golden experience from these greater rifts because you're getting credit for finishing and then you're also getting credit for closing the rift. Uh, starting to run out of monsters. Need to move quickly here. So I do really like these because it, it like gives you a re it just, like makes you focus on moving quickly. And it can make it for interesting builds because you may want to build maybe for speed. A you could maybe want to focus on AoE. Alright, there we go. The Rift Guardian has spawned. So, with the Rift Guardian, when he spawns, everything else dies. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where the Rift Guardian is. What happened? Where is he? So this is unfortunate because when the Rift Guardian spawns, everything else dies, right? Ah, there he is. He's up here. So that's good. Everything else dies. You don't have to worry about killing everything else. But your timer, you notice my timer is still going. So you have to not only get to the Guardian, but you have to kill him fast enough. So I got him with, looks like, 8 minutes, 21 seconds remaining. And you'll notice, boom, look at that. All this loot just piled out. Now, I didn't clear it as fast as I did the first time. So instead of getting a level 10 rift, you'll see I got a greater, greater rift keystone level 7. I get a good amount of gold, so in this case 76,000 and 9 million experience. Also got some pretty good items, so I'll go ahead and run over everything here. 45 blood shards, a few gems, and it looks like a legendary bow. So the idea of doing this is to get to the boss, and the boss gives you a huge amount of loot. I just love the loot explosion you get from the boss. I mean, you can see I got quite a bit of items here, and it looks like I got a wind force from him as well. I'll just go ahead and very quickly take a look at what I picked up. Yep, Wind Force, and then I can take a look to see if it's any better or worse. If I were to roll a socket, would it be better? And no, it wouldn't. So I'll probably just go ahead and get rid of that. But that's it. That's the Rift. We go over here, we talk to Auric. He will give me extra experience, in which case you can see I got 23,000 and 115,000 gold. And the rift will close. Now what I can do is I can take this greater rift level 7 and I can go in and do that one now. Now when I played in a party, I was playing in a party of two. Every time I did this it gave me two of the rift stones instead of just one. That may have been a bug 
or it may be giving out more of them since there's more of you to make sure you have more credit or to make sure you have more chances of doing it. I'm not really sure. So every time I moved on when I got this 10, 15, and 16, it doubled up for me when I was in a party. So I'm really not sure. I'll have to do more experimentation on that. And of course, if I get a definitive answer on that, I would definitely show it. So that was a level one rift. You may have noticed how easy it was for me to kill things. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this level seven. You'll notice here in the upper right it says Rift Difficulty 7. So those levels are the indicator of the difficulty. So even though I started that Rift on Torment 3, that Rift was probably easier than normal. Like, I mean literally the normal difficulty. Hmm. So oddly enough, there are treasure goblins that appear. So gold does drop, oddly enough. Gold, uh, I think that's to make it so that items that are based off of gold procs are still useful to you but no loot if there's some loot they may be bugged I think I've heard some people say they have found loot so there could be a bug regarding that but the downside here is for people that are using the belt that gets damaged when you over you open treasure chests you may notice that there are no treasure chests, there's no bodies, there's nothing to open. Since no loot drops in these areas, you're not going to be able to use that item here. You're going to want to probably come up with a better belt or a different build around it. So you can kind of see things are a little more difficult now. Not a lot. Things aren't dying as quickly. But it's still fairly easy for me in this. So the bad news is I didn't skip as many levels as I want to wanted to. But the good news is I shouldn't have a problem finishing this rift. I mean, this will be pretty quick. And I'll get more chances. Almost feel like having more chances of doing more rifts might even be more important. Because then I can just go through, get uh, more massive loot explosions. Although the idea is supposed to be when you finish, you're ultimately going to be getting things like legendary gems out of this. The legendary gems are in the PTR files, but they're not active yet. So when you complete this, the higher difficulty you get is supposed to give you better chances of getting gems and things like that. Now I believe... The chances of legendaries are the same across all the difficulties, but I'm not sure. Again, there's just not enough documentation. Blizzard really hasn't told us exactly how that works. As far as I know, they haven't mentioned exactly how that works. If you get better chances of legendary drops when you go into higher difficulties. Uh, my experience has been even on higher difficulties of rifts. I haven't seen a huge change in legendary drop rates. Um, there was a time on a early difficulty level... Um, I found, or on a higher difficulty level, I didn't find anything, and then there was times on um, lower difficulty levels I got a couple legendaries. So it, it looks like it can go either way, and it may just be based around getting the legendary gems once they're implemented, uh, especially since when you finally complete one of these rifts, you will get greeted by a vendor that will help you upgrade gems. Uh, or jewels, actually. They do call it jewels. So it looks like jewels, like the old D2 socketed jewels, which used to give you special bonuses, will be back in the form of these rifts. Which is kind of neat, because I remember the old jewels having some interesting effects, and they were definitely on par with the regular gems. At least some of them were, not all of them necessarily. So we'll go through here, try and complete this. My kill time is not too high right now. But aside from the new mechanics in how um, and how the timer works and how loot works, it's really just the same as another as another rift. A few gold here. It's completely random. And then, of course, you've got the difficulty change. But I've had a lot of fun with it. And I think it's more interesting when you've got more people with you, really. Let's move.
move on. Okay, we're at a dead end here. I mean, obviously the difficulty has gone up, so it's going to be a little bit harder for me to fill up the death timer. The first one, I just didn't have the density. This one, monsters just aren't dying as quickly, so there's that. Just a taste. Now, it's worth finishing the final rift, even if you have difficulty with it. Because once you do finally kill the boss, once again, you're going to get the loot explosion. Oh yeah, new effect for Frozen Pulse, so this is a lot easier to see now. And then kind of shows you that it doesn't do as much damage instantly as it used to. This guy's a minion, so I need to kill him to get some of those orbs. Or maybe not. Yeah, luck of the draw here. You won't survive that. See, the odd thing about these is each monster, weak or, weak or strong, usually counts about the same amount of the bar. Now, Blizzard said that tougher monsters are supposed to count for more on the bar, but it seems to only matter for these orbs. So, normal monsters... If I fight like 50 monsters that are super easy to kill or 10 monsters that are harder to kill the ones that are the 50 monsters are going to be worth more on the kill bar unless they're elite in which case I get these orbs and then I'm good so them saying that tougher monsters are worth more on the kill bar is maybe a little disingenuous just because seeing how the system works But I do think it's, um, I think it's a good way of doing it, tying it into the drops. Makes it almost feel like a bonus power-up or something. And it may have been hard to, or I don't know how the, the everything is coded, but it might not have been easy to code that kind of system to say, hey, this monster's worth 10 points, this monster's worth 25, you know, kind of put a point system on it like it was some kind of high score arcade game. Which, when you think about it, it kind of is, considering there's leaderboards. And the leaderboards are based on, depending on how many party members you have. So if you're going in solo, you can compare yourself against other solo players. You can compare them against your friends. You can compare it against uh, people in your clan or people all throughout Battle.net. But you can also, if you decide to go, say, you're doing uh, rifts and pairs, like when I was playing with a friend, um, there was just two of us. we could compare our stats as a duo team or you might join a full party to see what it take what you get as a party of four and there we go got him with about half the timer left and you can see that there was a achievement for it but it didn't have an icon for it yet and just look at this loot explosion I mean, this is really awesome and i got a key keystone fragment for level 11 now so I got about four levels on that. So what do we get? Bunch of items. Looks like I got a legendary ring and some legendary pants. Okay, lots of materials. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go out. Once again, PTR, not too worried. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I found. I think that's Blackthorns. Yep, Blackthorn's pants. And then we get a ring here. Oculus. There you go. So you can see some of the items I'm finding. Massive loot explosion. Really makes it worth it when you're going through the whole thing. Hmm, now, I didn't run into these before, but as I wanted to go ahead and show off that, that pylons do still show up in Greater Rifts, just like they do in normal Rifts. And if you are wearing the Nemesis Bracers, yes, it will activate a group of enemies. So the Nemesis Bracers can actually be useful for getting more enemies, because this will improve, of course, the kill count, and since they're elites, they will drop a bunch of orbs. So something to consider when you're going into these, you may want Nemesis Bracers, it may end up helping you. Now my plan is to kind of fast forward through these to just kind of, ooh, uh, nearly get myself killed when I decide to talk again, yes. Uh, 
I'm just going to kind of show these off. I'm going to fast forward to the end once I get to the final rift here because there's really it's much more of the same. I'm just going to run through it just like a normal rift, just only items aren't dropping. Uh, but I did want to mention one thing that seems to be useful for these rifts and why I think running it with other people is useful, especially if you're all of equal power and especially in lower level rifts is it because items don't drop you don't have to worry about items getting split up so you won't lose drops so the best thing you can do in one of these greater rifts i would think is if you're in a group of people is to split up just split up unless you don't think you can handle the monsters yourself i mean as the difficulty gets higher you're going to have to start gathering up more and more but in early levels until you find out until you can figure out just how much you can handle if you split up and tackle the rift you can kill more quickly there's just no point in sticking together. Nothing's going to drop. You don't have to worry about it. Only when the boss spawns, you have to worry about that. Now, the downside to that is you cannot teleport to players inside greater rifts, even if you're in the rift yourself. So if you spawn the boss, you want to make sure that your allies can get to you so they can get their items, basically. That's about the only downside to that. So when the kill counter starts getting close to being done, you might want to start grouping up and getting ready for the boss, especially since all enemies die the moment the, the boss spawns. So that makes it pretty nice, too, that the since everything dies, because then you don't have to worry about fighting a huge group of monsters and a boss, which could either make it exceptionally difficult or just kill your time. All right, we're on Rift level 11. We've just spawned our Rift Guardian, and unfortunately, he spawned way back there. Wait, before we go... That's a shield pylon. Nope, don't need that. That'll spawn a group of monsters, and I don't need that. So here we go. Taking on the level 11 Rift Guardian, the Choker. Why so serious? And you can see I have about five and a half minutes left on the clock. We're closer to taking him out. There we go. So about 523. There we go. 523 remaining. And that got me up to level 14 from 11. And we can see I got another legendary. So this time I got a belt. My bag is too heavy. And about 40 shards from that. Lots of reusable parts and arcane dust. If you're looking for... Uh, materials and you're looking for gems apparently this is not a bad way to go so those are all the items that dropped this time around a few yellows I am returning to town. I'll go ahead and show off the belt I got got the string of ears some bolas damage on it so there we go Alright, so I ended up in the trap of a whole bunch of arcane beams. I just want to kind of reiterate here to show that you cannot revive at your corpse. You cannot revive at town. Only the last checkpoint. Now, the good news is that the checkpoint is usually the last doorway that you entered in, or the last rift zone. So if you just transitioned to a new rift area, like level 2, level 3, whatever, then you're fine. You're going to be put right back pretty much right where you were. But if the level you're currently on is fairly lengthy, fairly large, then you're going to be in trouble. You're going to start losing time like crazy. So it really encourages you having some kind of survivability, some kind of survival plan uh, when you're moving forward. So it's something you're going to want to consider for your builds. Being glass cannon may not always work just because you are being timed. And that's a new factor that, you know, outside of that one area in Act 3, I believe, or Act 2, actually, uh, where you've got this timed run, there was really been nothing to worry about aside from all maybe enraged timers. But that's not something you had to worry about moving on. That's something you had to worry about doing a lot of damage on very quickly. Now... Granted, you could still bypass this timer by doing a lot of damage. But survival is also going to be equally important, I feel. So there's a couple ways to recover if you are losing time here. So I'm losing I lost time. I started off a little bit behind. I'm starting to recover a little bit, but unfortunately the timer, the death timer and the or the death counter and the timer are so close together right now. 
unless I pull ahead a major victory, I'm more than likely not going to get through this rift uh, before the timer. The only real ways you can do this is to basically charge through and find a huge group of enemies. That's one way. That'll give you a bunch of the of this. I mean, in that regard, you may want to have a build that allows you to move through enemies and move through enemies quickly and then gather them all together. Once you gather them all together, start killing them. I mean, that's pretty much the premise it appears for doing this. The other way is to basically find yourself a good elite pack uh, and try and kill it as fast as you can. If you've got a good burst damage, that's probably one of your best bets because then the orbs you pick up will start to give you back the time you've lost. So you'll kind of see here through these elites here that I'm about to kill, I'm more than likely going to make up some of my time even though I'm starting to lose that time. I'll come up here, pick up a bunch of these orbs, and there I've just made a huge jump into the, the death timer. So I'm hoping to actually get past this and to move further ahead. The downside is I keep running into a bunch of these scavenger guys, and they're very difficult to kill because they have the armor, and then they get out, and then they scavenge for the armor again. Um, seems like I'm not doing too bad here, though, getting a good amount of damage out, and as long as I can keep that up, I might be okay. But these things can certainly be slow to kill if they don't want to die. All right, I've gotten to the Rift Guardian here for rank 14. And the Crusader King, Leoric. Getting very close. You can kind of see that my timer and my kill counter are really high. Unfortunately, at one point, I ended up dying and had to kind of run back. And I was trying to find an alternate route to make things a little faster. It didn't quite work out. So I've got, as you can see at the top, 44 seconds to kill this guy before I run out of time. I'm more than likely going to get it and get another fragment, but the truth of the matter is it's probably only going to take it's probably only going to give me a level 15 fragment and level 15 is probably where my journey is going to end because unless I get a better get some better luck here. All right, so great. There's my level 15 fragment. We can see this time as I kind of mentioned before, I got 55 shards out. I didn't get any legendary, so I'm on a higher difficulty and all the previous difficulties gave me legendaries so the chances of legendary drops don't appear to be affected but then again rng is rng so we really don't know so and what i'd like to point out too here is you can see your friends and yourself so here uh, stuff rule says he's reached level uh rank 86 on the solo monk leaderboard achieved a new personal best on tier 17 for 9 minutes 44 seconds and for me we can see I got a new personal best on 14 which I don't think I've ever done 14 before solo well I haven't done any of them really solo before so everything I do is going to be a personal best but 1430 and I'm on the leaderboard of course you're going to be on the leaderboard but where on that leaderboard are you is a good question 45 seconds Rift Guardian has just been spawned we've got well it looks like it's Zoltan Cool Zoltan, cool story, bro. If I'm lucky, I may be able to take him out and move on to rank 16. There's just not enough time for me to get skip any levels. This is going to go to the next one right away if I get him. Got about 23 seconds. It looks like I should be able to do it. So even though I thought I was going to be done here, it looks like I will be moving on. So I'll keep going, and uh, I'd like to show you guys what it's like when you can't succeed. Uh, but at the same time, I want to see how far I can get and show you how far you can get here. Oh, 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 oh. Three seconds left on the clock. Look at that. And a level 16 and two legendaries. Whew. Gloves, bracers, 42 shards. Whew. Yeah, we're, we're done here. I'll show the experience once again, too, uh, seeing as how... That way you can see if there's any more experience being obtained with each one of these closed. 23,000 on that and 115 gold. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we got for gloves and bracers. And we got gladiator gauntlets. And we got Kastarian wrist guards. 
Here I wanted to take a moment to kind of show off just what RNG can do in one of these rifts. I'm basically finding a huge group of monsters right at the beginning of this greater rift, and right off the bat you can kind of see I'm already above the timer with a pretty healthy lead. And then once I'm done with this group, it should go up even further because of this being an elite pack. So yeah, you can see I've got a pretty healthy lead on it now. If, as long as the monster density continues to be high, uh, I might be good on this one. Might be able to move on to the next one. So really, the density of the maps you get can play a huge factor in how far you get. But that being said, as I've said before, you kind of have to have some kind of strategy as well. I mean, there is that to consider. Uh, moving around, basically running from pack to pack, not stopping to fight smaller groups of enemies can definitely help you, even if the RNG is not in your favor. Like in this case, I'm just lucky enough to where I can just keep moving, keep killing, because every time I turn a corner here... I'm getting a whole bunch of enemies. Now this is not necessarily because of the difficulty of the rift. The rift's difficulty should only really be affecting the health of the monsters and in some ways how aggressive they are. Actually, I'm not even sure about that. I'm that probably not that. But the health of the monsters and their attack power will continually be going up with every difficulty and it shouldn't be affecting the density that is purely random much like any normal rift I mean, as you can see here here we go we're getting a large section of emptiness for now and then we are finally able to get a group of monsters to fight knowing how to counter that knowing how to move quickly so having speed builds Builds with uh, movement abilities. Like me, I don't typically run with movement abilities on this character. I could. I've been focusing more on damage, and I kind of have, since I'm doing sentry builds, I'm kind of more concerned with being stationary, hunkering down, and doing a lot of damage. So once I finally get the enemies that I can fight, I usually do a quick job of killing them. Uh, but other people that have different builds, such as moving quickly, may have an easier time of actually doing these rifts than I do, because they'll be much more mobile, able to go from pack to pack, and won't have to stop. So your burst builds may actually be a little bit better in this regard. Alright, managed to get the Rift Guardian for level 16. We've got the Butcher, Man Carver. Didn't really think I was going to get this far with this much success, so I'll keep reporting on each difficulty I clear to kind of show off the boss, how hard he is, and kind of give you an idea of what to expect. Man Carver, much like in other incarnations inside Rifts, will have this rune. Of course, he's got the Waller, too, which is making it very difficult to kill him right away. Oh, well, I think that might put an end to my aspirations of actually completing this Rift, because he is way down on the other side. Uh, wow. Well, that... <laughs> Never mind what I said about continuing to show the further risk, because this is going to be it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to him in 10 seconds and kill him, so that's unfortunate. I wasn't expecting that. But hey, honestly, this is a good thing, because I've been kind of showing off different bosses, and getting up to 16 is not too bad. So there we go. You can see that the timer just ended there. Now i got to get to him. Why is it showing another timer? Uh, that might be a bug. Oh, well. Wow, he's chasing me. I saw that. He was actually trying to come and get me. So I done goofed, but the good news is, is this means I can finish it off, show you what happens when you fail a rift. When... Although to say failure is kind of not entirely true. I mean, I'm still going to beat the rift, but I just didn't beat it in the time limit. And so you'll see... Oh, jeez. Come on now. There we go. Bam! Nephilim, you made it this far.
Yikes. Okay. I have appeared to aid you. So beating it or completing it, you can see you get this final screen that shows you, hey, congratulations. Here's your final level. You got the 16. And then it tells you, you also gain such and such experience in gold for doing it. So I got 9 million for exper for completing it, and I got 76,000 gold for getting it. So that's to getting the 16. And that's when Urshi shows up, and she's like, hey, you made it this far. Here's what you get. And what we get here is this wonderful bad data legendary. See that? Bad data. With a smiley face. That is just so awesome. I love finding bad data. <laughs> PTR, ladies and gentlemen, PTR. Now, it looks like I got a crossbow, a set ring, an item I can't pick up. Oh, wow, you can't pick that up. That is a shame. So, <laughs> Yeah, you can't pick this thing up. That's that's unfortunate. All right, Rumeladni's gift. I'm really sad that I can't pick this up because what you're looking at is one of these new items that was added in this patch. Rumeladni's gift is an item that is supposed to add sockets to any item you want. If I had, for example, let's identify this crossbow. All right, let's assume that Hellrack here didn't have a socket. I could use this gift to put a socket on it. You get a piece of armor. It will put sockets into it. Now, it will put the maximum number of sockets on an item that that item will carry. So if you get a chest piece with no sockets on it, you use this item and it'll have three. Now, supposedly... I'm sorry, let me correct this since I just looked up how this exactly works because apparently there was a blue post regarding this item. Supposedly this only works on weapons, so I apologize. When I said it would be added to chess pieces and pants and all that, uh, this is only for weaponry, not for other pieces of armor, which is unfortunate. Uh, well, it's fortunate that you can't add it to weapons, and I think the reason why they added this is because we're seeing kind of how sockets are so important on weapons. Sockets are kind of the be-all, end-all. It's nice to know there's an item that can drop that will make it so that you can add a socket to a weapon. Now, people will be asking, well, what if you have a weapon that already has full set of affixes, like this? I've got six affixes on this Balefire caster. One of them is a socket. Will it add another socket? No, you can't add a second socket to it. But what I could do is I could take that socket, take the gym out, Reroll the socket into another primary stat. So let's say I rerolled it to vitality or resist all. I would lose the socket, but then I could use uh, Romaldi, Romaldi's, I just can't say it, the gift. I could use the gift to add a socket back to the Baleful, Balefire caster. It will add it as a new effect. So you can have a weapon with six affixes, and this will make it effectively a seventh affix. So you can add an, another affix with this. So this is something you're going to want to hold on to and use on an item that rolls well or has the number of affixes that you want on it and then add on to it. And it's really cool to see them adding that kind of item because of how bad the situation is with weapons right now. So good to see, good to know. Beyond that, here's Urshi, who's a crafter. You can talk to her. You can select craft. And you can see there's upgrade jewel. Uh, but there's we have no jewels. There, I can't put anything to it. It doesn't take these fragments. It doesn't really take anything. It doesn't take gems. Nothing. Don't take none of that. So this is more than likely going to be for upgrading or creating legendary gems was, is going to be my guess. I'm going to have to look more info up on this. She will show up at the end of any of your runs. So if you, com if you fail to complete a run and you fail to... If you fail to complete it in time, she will show up. So you don't have to worry about her not showing up when you've completed a run if you succeeded. Only that you failed. Uh, and so it's designed, and again, that's why I think that this is designed to be where you're supposed to get those legendary gems, and she helps you to create them into something more powerful. So that is the 
Greater Rift, I need to go ladies and gentlemen. And unfortunately, I can't get my item. It's unfortunate. It is mentioned on the P on the uh, Blizzard forums that they do know that it cannot be looted. They do know it's dropping in this state, uh, and they and that's why they put up a post to say how it's supposed to work because they know that people can't get it, and so they wanted everybody to know what to expect. So my impressions now that I've gone through the whole thing. My impressions is it's kind of fun. I kind of like the fact that it's uh, something to go through. 23 million and 115,000 gold. Very nice. Uh, something to go through to challenge yourself to do better. Uh, I like the fact that there's the leaderboard so you can kind of see how well your character stacks up to other characters. Uh, so that's pretty neat. Uh, once it gets fully implemented and we see the gems and all that... I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, looking at this, too, it's a great source of experience and shards. Like, I got a ton of experience. I got multiple levels of Paragon going through that. And I like the fact that it's a huge explosion of loot at the end. So, so far, I really like these new Greater Rifts. Uh, it's just unfortunate I didn't get to show you guys the Cesspool, which is a new Rift Zone that they've added. Uh, that was supposed to be part of the West March sewers, and they didn't have it ready. But it looks really cool. Uh, another thing that I've heard that happens now is there's apparently the Realm of Greed. So we've heard for a while this rumor about being able to open up portals from treasure goblins and get into the real Realm of Greed. Apparently that is now a thing, and it does and can happen uh, when you kill a treasure goblin. Now, it's supposedly, it's just a rumor that they have to be opening the portal when you kill them. Apparently, if you kill them, there is a chance for this realm to spawn, and it has a massive treasure chest inside of it. So, altogether, this patch, this content patch, is looking really good. I like this whole rift, tiered rift, greater rift system a lot, just by itself, and that's without going into the new seasons, which are going to have a whole bunch of new items and things like that. So there's a lot, I think, here that's going to be interesting. And I think that for people that have wanted ladders all this time, that this is going to be something that they may be looking for. I know when I talked with some people in the comments section about some people not liking the fact that there's legendaries that will only be on a season because some people don't want to have to start all over. But on the bright side, if you don't want to start a new character on a season, it looks like there's still going to be items and things for you to do without joining a new season. And once that season's over, everything will be pulled over to the main servers. Uh, the only thing that you may lose out on is there's these transmog sets and possibly a new set of die. So you may want to consider making a character just to try to get some achievement points in order to get it. But the good news is, is they're only cosmetic items that you're losing out on if you don't join. All right, so thank you very much for watching this video on the Greater Rift system. If you have any questions that I can maybe try and figure out, if you don't want to play the PTR yourself, or if there's any comments or anything like that you want to leave, please leave them in the, in the comment section below. Of course, feel free to like, share, subscribe. You know the deal. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one.